from San Diego. It's the Tom Likas Show. That's my job, baby. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk book. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Micah's 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. So how long do I wait to call? A day. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow, then a day. Yeah. So two days. Yeah, I guess you could call it that Definitely. two days. Two days is like industry standard. Well, how long are you guys going to wait to call your babies? Six, Six days. days. How many times did you call her this week? Twice. Twice? You called her twice? Dan, never call abroad more than once a week. Never, ever, ever. It's like this 101, the ongoing on air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom classes in session this is where we teach the tenets of like it's 101 the basics and these are the things you need to know before beginning this class first of all dating equals porking the purpose of getting out on the, a date with somebody is to get sex that's the purpose of it where do we get all turned around and start talking about relationships and Talking about, uh, you know, having conversations with people and getting to know people. The purpose is to get laid. Everything else is just a ruse. We, we, we sit and talk with you ladies because we want to see you naked. That's the only reason we talk to you. We have nothing in common with you. We don't even like talking to you. Understand, when you're on a date with us, we are just tolerating your presence. We're tolerating that stuff you say, blah, 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 that stuff we don't care about. We're just tolerating it, that waiting, waiting in our heads, uh, mentally drumming our fingers until we can finally rip that blouse off and start nailing you. That is all we're doing. Ladies, don't kid yourself. We don't care about your little opinions about things. We couldn't care less. We don't care about your little lives and your problems at the office and who you think is going to win the presidential election. I mean, please, ladies, we just want sex, and we are pretending to have an interest in all that, that minuscule claptrap you talk about just to get laid. And somehow, some of you ladies have convinced guys that you're going on a date to have a conversation. Or to play play poker or something. I don't know, but we're not. We're not on a date to go out to Starbucks and try different flavors of coffee. We don't go on dates so we can walk in the park. We don't care about any of that stuff. And ladies, if you showed up on a date naked and said, let's get out of this place and just do me, how many guys do you think would say no? You'd be You'd be frightened to know how many guys would say yes to that. Would we care that you look like a complete slut or that you look like you're insane? No, we wouldn't. First, we'd have sex. We'd shoot first and ask questions later. No doubt about it. Guys, stop forgetting why you're on a date. It's to get laid. I tell every guy, this is always like right before the weekend, I tell the guys, think about it. If you've got a date schedule and getting laid is not the primary reason you're going on the date, cancel it immediately. Don't answer that phone this weekend unless it's from one of your buddies. Don't answer the phone. Don't do it. You want women to believe you are busy. You are in demand. You are out there all the time. Women want guys they can't have, not ones they can have. Stop being the one they can have. Stop answering your cell phone on half a ring. Don't respond to those god-awful text messages. When a woman sends you a text message... 
Tell her you don't have text messaging. Just tell her you don't get it. Tell her it's expensive. Tell her, you, you know, you're spending your money on better things. You're investing for the future. You're not wasting your money on text messaging. Don't, do not, do not let her start asking you where you are and what you're thinking about and what you're doing all the time. How many of you guys are, like, tethered to those stupid text messages like a girl? Stop it. Stop doing it. For Christ's sake. Dating equals porking, boys. It's the uh, three strikes you're outlaw here at Like Us 101. If a woman doesn't put out on three dates, we kick her to the curb. We're done. There are no second chances. You're out. You're out, sister. You're done. If you haven't uh, jumped our bones within three dates, it means you have no interest, and we are not wasting our time or our money on you. We do not date single mothers. Single mothers already made one mistake. We're not paying for the next one. It's that simple. You uh, sit there and enjoy your little mistake, but we want nothing to do with it. Yes, I said it. You sit home there trying to find a babysitter. We're moving on with our lives. We do not spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. 40 is a maximum. You can spend anything up to 40 but we recommend you spend as little as possible. Because a woman decides in advance whether she's going to have sex with you. At best, you get 30 seconds when she sees you. And then after that, it doesn't matter how much money you spend, how much champagne you pour down her gullet, how much lobster and drawn butter you shove down her throat. It doesn't matter. Uh, she's already decided. You know how you know this? You know how you know this? I dated a woman. I'm going to tell you right now. I dated a woman who always tried to appear to not be that kind of girl. You know, not a slut. Not a slut. Always tried to appear that way. <laughs> and if I called her up and, and I had to call up with a premise. I knew how it worked with her. I had to call up with a premise. So I would call her up and I would say to her, why don't you come over and have a glass of wine? And she'd come over and have a glass of wine, and she would literally, she'd have her clothes for the next day on a hanger. She'd have an overnight, but this have a glass of wine. How do you know I want to get laid? <laughs> yeah, she's not that kind of girl. But literally, she'd be there in 30 minutes or less with her clothes on a hanger. Now, did I have to buy this woman any lobster? Did I even have to open a good bottle of wine? No, she was in. It was done. Done. I'm not making that up. That's what she was like. That was the deal. And any time, but the thing is, I couldn't call her up and say, you know what, I'm horny. Come over here and let's bang. You couldn't say that. You always had to have some ruse. Come on, let's watch a movie. Come on, it's a beautiful night. Come over and take a look out my terrace. You got to see the, oh my God, it's a full moon tonight. You always had to have some premise. And sure enough, there she'd show up with business attire on a hanger for the next day. That's right, she'd show up with her toothbrush <laughs> just to watch a movie. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, boys. So you see, when they show up with uh, a toothbrush, you don't have to buy them lobster. You don't have to drink Cristal. Are you kidding me? It's a done deal. Women plan in advance. They know if they're going to have sex with you. They bring panties... They, the dog has a dog sitter. They, when a woman tells you she has to go home and walk the dog, you're not getting laid. It doesn't matter how much you buy her, you are not getting laid, okay? When she tells you that the dog is going to need to go out at some point tonight, you're done. It's done. But when a woman intends to get laid, she, her best friend takes care of the dog, or she goes to the uh, the doggy motel or whatever. She takes the dog to the kennel. Uh, the, the, the thing is, the stuff is all taken care of. Women decide in advance. And if you're new to having sex with a woman, many women don't want to have sex when they're having their period. So they pretty much know before they leave the house they're not going to have sex with you at that time. That's it. No amount of cajoling or coaxing is going to work, and no amount of money spent is going to work. Spending money and wasting your time on these women is just its preposterous. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. And uh, finally, I'll just say this very briefly, and I, I've been reminding you boys, but I think some of you have been forgetting. 
Please do not tolerate women who talk on the cell phone while they're on a date with you or the ones who send text messages while they're on a date with you. These women are chatting up other guys. That's what's happening. There's other guys chatting them up, and they're chatting up other guys. It's the ultimate sign of disrespect that a woman sits there with you chatting with another guy. Now, I'm not looking for exclusive relationships or monogamy or control. I, I couldn't care less. It's just while you're with me, I want your attention, especially if I'm buying some minor dinner for you or I'm buying you drinks or whatever. I'm paying for exclusivity. And the minute you start talking to someone else or chatting with someone else, I'm going to leave your ass in that restaurant so fast your head will spin. And I have done it. And let me just tell you right now, I didn't come up with this idea out of thin air. I didn't pull this out of my ass. I've done this. I have dumped chicks. I'm going to tell you where I did it, too. I was at Lola's, the martini bar on Fairfax, one of my favorite hangs. And I was with a chick who's sitting there at the bar, sipping on her apple martini, and she hears her phone buzzing and doesn't even apologize, just takes it out and starts typing stuff in. Now, in the back bar, there's two bars at Lola's, one in the front by the front door, and there's one in the back. The one in the back has its own little unisex bathroom. So I excused myself and said I had to go to the bathroom, and I walked in the direction of the unisex bathroom, and she was so tied up in typing stuff into her phone, I simply made a U-turn and headed towards the front door, went and got my car and disappeared. And do you know it took about 15 minutes before she noticed that I was still in the bathroom or I was still gone? Then she starts texting me. And I texted her one text back. I said, it looked like you were busy. I didn't want to bother you. <laughs> I know this chick is probably listening. You know who you are. You know who you are. By the way, this chick called me constantly after this, wanting to hook up with me. I have never, ever gone. I don't press the rewind button. Once they F up, I'm out. Out. Done. Your professor has a lot of experience. Your professor is here to share the benefits of his knowledge with you. I am here to help you avoid commitment, avoid relationships, and especially avoid marriage. I'm here to help you save money, time, and energy. Don't waste any of it on women who aren't going to give you what you want, which is to get laid. If you have questions for your professor, you can call him at 1-800-5800-TOM. Many of you disagree with the tenets of Like Us 101. If you disagree, we welcome a vigorous classroom debate. All you need to do is participate. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. We'll break it down for him. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Before I date anybody else, to make sure they're not a Tom Like It student. Oh, I guarantee you 99.910% is a Tom Like It student, and that one ten percent is a mama's voice. Or a complete moron. Well, that's it. I'm becoming a lesbian. It's Like His 101 on the Tom Like His Show. Show coming to you from the studios of 1037 3 FM in San Diego. Tomorrow we're here uh, in San Diego for our listener party at Kane's on Mission Beach. The show starts at 3, doors open at 2. And uh, ladies, if uh, you are hotter than hot and uh, you don't want to wait in the line outside, send us your photograph and your cell phone number, and Gary Zabransky will call you back and set you up to get in the back door. You can party like a rock star. All right, send that photo to Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Don't forget your cell phone number. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. All right, like us 101, 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Tom on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Doing great. You know what? Long time, first time. 
Um, hey, you know, I had a similar experience with uh, a girl I was on a date with, and she was uh, doing her text message. And uh, here, uh, you know, I catch her in the middle. We're, uh, you know, getting cocktails or whatever. And uh, she casually says, oh, uh, Mike and them and so-and-so, they're out at a bar later if we wanted to meet up. Well, here, it's her ex-boyfriend, right? And I'm like, at first, I kind of, like, blew it off. And uh, they have a professional relationship together. Um, but nonetheless, is yeah, it pissed me off. And uh, I left. I walked out the front door, gave the valet my ticket, and left her at the bar. And coincidentally, I'm dating this girl. Uh, well, I do. I was dating this girl, but we still see each other occasionally. And uh, she was kind of like your glass of wine girl. So called her, went over her house, and that's how that night ended. Well, uh, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, when they're texting while they're out with you, it's always a guy. Oh, it's a guy. It's right. somebody they can't talk to on the phone because they'd sound, uh, you know, too cutesy or too coy on the phone. So they well, type their messages as texts. Mm-hmm. I know. I mean, the minute it's you see like them start you know, typing, the minute you see them start typing on a date, it's time to go. Yeah, and I actually saw her and I called her out of it. And I was like, you know, here's the thing. I mean, if we're, you're on my time, you know, like, <laughs> like fast times, rich one, high. You know, this is our time. You know, why if if you need to talk to her or whatever, why why do I have to be there while you're conversing with your ex boyfriend? I, I don't care. Do your thing. You know, well, I'm not married. I'm single, and I ride that as long as possible. But um, you know, I was just like, it's just why waste my time? I'm totally had, agreeing. And it cost her twenty bucks because she had to get a cab. <laughs> <laughs> so you just hey, got uh, up and bolted. Great. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, I, w I wanted to ask you, can you take me out Lacey Peterson style? Or well, th that would be tasteless, as you know. Yeah. That would be tasteless, sir. Yes. Emmer. Hey. Emmer. Emmer, make your two friends. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Tom. Hello, Rob. How you doing? Do you care? A big time. I'm doing great. Big time listener, long time listener. Excellent. Um, love the show. Great entertainment on the road. Hey, but I got a question for you. You usually tell us guys to take them back to their place and do them there. I, I know that, you know, you sometimes get those women that insist they want to come over to see you. They bring their overnight bag. You mentioned earlier that sometimes you have, you, I think uh, you mentioned you've had a couple of women who bring their overnight bags and toothbrush and whatnot. How do you keep them from doing that? Well, generally, you do try to keep them from doing it. And uh, uh, the way you keep them from doing it is, uh, see, for me, it's kind of difficult because I do a radio program and I say on the air all the time, I live alone. I love living alone. I'm alone. But uh, I tell guys to say you've got a roommate. Gotcha. Say you've got a gentleman's agreement not to bring chicks back there and uh, and your roommate doesn't appreciate it. Blame it on the non-existent roommate. Okay, good one. All right, gotcha. Hey, buddy, can I can I prove to you how much of a loyal listener I am? Yes, indeed. Thank you. All right, here we go. Thank you for calling the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. You know what? I screwed up. I'm so nervous talking to you, man. Stop. <laughs> blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Uh, tom. Hello, Alex. Tom, um, dude, I want to thank you very, very much for everything you've done. Um uh, tell you a story about four years ago I used to be a complete pussy you know I used to take them out open the door 
still one down the yard. My dad wasn't around when I grew up. Now he is, because we, you know, I grew up in um, Damascus, Syria, and um, he was here. And then at 18, I came here, and you know, I, I, I had to be sweet to girls. I thought, and then as soon as I started listening to you, dude, like the forty dollar mark, I don't even hit that, dude. Like in and out, maybe subway, and that's it. That's as far as I would go. Really? And uh, yeah, I did. Love it. Yeah, and and thanks to you, and you know, I, I do get laid, you know, just about once a week, because um, I, I have two jobs and stuff, but. Dude, it's been going really well. Well, there you go. I'm very proud of you. I think that's fantastic. I'm a loyal son. Uh, Alex, I'm a proud father. Thanks, Tom. You, you, you're the prophet of sex. Let's put it that way. <laughs> this is Trina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. I just wanted your consent to get married. Well, that's quite the responsibility. All right, go ahead. Well, that's it. I just wanted your consent. Well, why do you need my consent? Well, I don't need it. I just wanted it. I was. I know, no, but I know nothing about. I know nothing about your situation. All I will tell you is, uh, there are no benefits to a man to get married, but there are benefits to women. And the benefit is that if it doesn't work out, you could take half or more of everything he has. Oh no, we're going to do a prenup. Really. Yeah, we are. All right. Well, because I just went to school and got my education and everything, and now I have a job, and so I'm expecting to be successful. Well, wh why, so do you he, why do you need to be married? I don't know. He asked me. We've been together a long time. I wanted to be married before I had kids. Oh, so it's for kids. Well, no. I just think that it's better to be married before you have children. Well, if you're going to have kids, it's better for the children. Again, yeah, the man, the man involved has nothing to years. gain. The man has nothing to gain. And if you're signing a prenup, there's not much you have to gain either. Well, right. So then it's just a marriage just for marriage's sake, right? Well, I don't do anything for its own sake. I, I usually do things because there's some uh, positive benefit, something I'm going to get out of it that I'm not getting now. Right. So you don't think we should get married? Well, I think you should do whatever you want. I'm just saying, I wouldn't. Well, he's listening right now. He says that you can call him and talk to him if you need to. He said that to you, thinking that I was just going to put a rubber stamp on this? No, I don't, it was I don't my see... idea to call. Okay, well, I don't see the benefit to it. There's a benefit to the children, and if you're getting married and you want to make that sacrifice, well, that's just fine, but uh, there's no benefit to a man to get married. I'll tell him that. Since he's listening, and well, as wouldn't far it be as an equal benefit for both of us? The, 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 yeah, equal meaning zero equals zero. Okay. All right. There's just, no benefit. In other words, words it is equal. You... It is equal because there's no benefit to either one of you. <laughs> well, what if we just love each other? Well, you're doing that now, right? Yeah. So getting married isn't going to make you love him anymore. No, you're right. In fact, I thought as, it would be fun to run away and get married, but we're going to have uh, a wedding for the family. Well, that's like saying it's fun to get a car loan, you know? Because really it's the same kind of thing. You're signing a bunch of papers. You're agreeing to make payments years into the future. Right. I mean, would you ever say that to yourself? You know what? I'm going to run down to the car dealer. I'm going to drop the paperwork for a car loan because it would just be fun to do that. No. No? No. Depends on the car, I guess. <laughs> well, having the car is one thing. It's the loan. Because all the okay. paperwork indicates is how much you're going to owe. Right. So if you're going to get married, that means there's paperwork. And the paperwork means at some point somebody's going to pay. Well, if, even if we have a prenup, so that means nobody pays. So, if it right, so then what now, is the point of getting married? What do you need that for? Do you love him? Absolutely. All right, you'll love him whether you get married or not, right? You're right, you're right. I now, believe that uh, does your vagina work properly? I mean, uh, do you yeah. have to get married before you can open it? No. We're no. Fine. So you can use it for sexual purposes or have children with it or whatever you want to do with it. You can do that right now. 
Yeah, you're right. And we have been. All right. You've been doing it already. I just so, wanted your blessing just because I listen to your show a lot, and you said, say not to get married. and I'm I do. do that. Well, then why do you want to be the exception to the rule? I mean, I guess we all want to be the exception to the rule, right? Well, darling, there's no benefit to either one of you to get married. All right, Tom. Well, thank you so much. So just remember, when you're getting married, it's it's just like taking out a loan, going down to the bank, filling out some paperwork. Well, yeah, but when I get a loan, I get money. I'm not getting money from marrying him. I, that's not my point. You get, no, you're only borrowing money. You're going to pay it back. What I'm saying is it's just an obligation. It, 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 it does not improve your life or your relationship in any way. All right. I've been divorced four times. So I know what it's like to get married and then come home with the person you just married. The first yeah, thing I is, know, and then I figure the next day you're still the same two people, right? That's right. And that's, by the way, when I got married the first couple of times, that's exactly what I said. I don't feel any different. Well, you I know don't what? My key still unlocks the front that's door. The Everything is the same. Huh? I don't expect to feel any different. Then that's why the are you thing. doing so, it? <laughs> then why would you want to do it? Because we've been together for so long. And so what? We might as well, right? No. That's no. like saying, we've been together for so long, might as well jump off a cliff. I mean, what? <laughs> well, the fact that you've been together so long doesn't mean you have to go and do something that doesn't make any sense. Right. And okay. you've been together so long, you don't need paperwork, do you? Yeah, you're right. I just, it, it's the kids thing, too. I mean, if I do want to have kids, I have a sister that's one of the girls that you talk about, you know? Well, again, I do three agree. Kids, I do dads. agree there are benefits to a child, but there are none for you. Well, don't you think for the kids it's better to say that my parents are married? You are. You are. Well, again, you're sacrificing on behalf of the kids because you're making a commitment you don't need and that provides you with no benefits. Right. But if uh, you know, yes, I agree. You're, there are benefits yeah, to children. I don't think that there's any benefits. You're right for that. There's there's nothing that's going to be different. But we're going to do it just to do it because we love each other and it'll be fun. We we'll got lots of presents. <laughs> right. Yep, there's a good reason to get married. Presents. <laughs> How many blenders do you need? I don't even have one. Now you'll have six. No. No, I really you're... just wanted to run away somewhere and do it if I was going to do it at all. What, are you going to register whole... a crate and barrel or something? I, I don't know. I hadn't even really thought about Pottery it. Pottery barn. I magazines and they just sit in my car. <laughs> Sounds very exciting, Trina. Yeah. I you make marriage You make marriage sound so appetizing. No, it will. I love them very much. And I think that we'll yeah. be very happy together. We'll be just as happy now as... Well, if you'd be just as happy as you are now, why do you need to get married? You see, I, I would do. I, you know what? I would say, go ahead and do it. If you told me, it's going to make me ten times happier than I am today. I'm, I'm not really that happy. I'd be really happy if I were married. But you're not even saying that. No, I'm saying we're completely happy, and getting married isn't going to be any different. We're just as happy together. <laughs> I, I believe that totally. I mean, I listen to your show daily. I love listening to your, your show. You, my dad always tells me that you teach on your show, but he's been teaching me since I was little. Well, and, and here I am telling you that getting married will make absolutely no difference in your life whatsoever. Okay, well, thank you. And you know it's true, too. You've agreed with me. I do know me. it's true. I do. But, you know, that's what happens. You get older and you get married and you, you know, do the And then, you, the then you get even older and you get divorced. Then oh, you get I married again. Get Nobody who gets married wants to get divorced, and nobody who ever gets married ever thinks they are going to get divorced. You're another one of these. You know, you're in love. And your love is a very special love, and it's different from the love of all the other people who are in love. They only think they're in love, but you and your boyfriend, you're really, really in love. <laughs> you love each other more than any two people on earth have ever loved each other going back the history of time. Think back at all the great couples over the years, you know. Uh, uh, all the great couples. I can't name any great couples because I really can't think of one. But uh, think back at all the love. You, you guys are in love more than any two people love each other. No one knew it was possible to love this much. 
Well, I don't you know. You could about never all that. you could never get a divorce because you love each other so much. All the other people who get divorces, they only think they're in love. They don't they do not know. Well, love. you know, you never say like, never. You, know you never really know what's going to happen tomorrow, but as of right now, I I think we're good. That that sounds like a lifelong commitment. It, it, no, it is. It's been seven and a half years. It's a long time. I love him. We live together. We're going to be the same people later as we are right now. But I wanted to let you know that we were getting married because we both listened to you. And That's why you're getting married. No, you're not getting married because you both listen to me. That you're definitely no. not doing. No. I was calling you to let you know that this is happening. Oh, Okay. Nothing's well, going to make a difference in your life. I just thought you would know. I'll keep, I'll keep an eye on my mailbox for the save the date, for God's sake. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. Tom Likas? Likas. Likas! 1-800-5800-TOM. I respect you as a god. I'm going to live the rest of my adulthood under your rules. Thank you. <laughs> I am firm but fair. The Tom Likas Show. It's like it's 101. I am your professor. At 1 800 5 800 Tom, this is Erica. Hello. Hello, Tom. Why, Tom. yes. Hello, Tom. Nice to hear you. Finally, I got through. Just a question, Tom. Hmm. You've been married four times, right? Right. Okay, now, if you're so against marriage, why did it take you four marriages to realize that? Well, dear, as I've said on the program, once you've been through four marriages, you certainly are an expert, and you are in a position to talk about whether it's a good thing or not. But four marriages, Tom, four? Dear, I've answered this question on the air a million times. Uh, yeah, so are you, a, are you a new listener here? Oh, you know what? My father got me into this about a week ago. Ridiculous. Enough. Okay. My father, he's like, I want you to listen to this. Well, I will tell you what your father already knows because he's heard me say it on the air. I grew up in a family where my parents were married for 40 years. Uh -huh. and, so, and so it was my belief that that was what you were supposed to do. And mm -hmm. when I failed in a marriage, that I believed time. it was my failure. Not that it was the failure of the institution of marriage. Uh, not that uh, marriage uh, is uh, a stacked deck and you can never, ever, ever come out ahead as a man. I believed it was my fault, and I kept trying, which was my mistake, because in reality, uh, marriage has no benefits for men at all. It has no benefits? Not for men. Not for men. Correct. Oh. And then another thing about not spending more than $40 in a date if you're going to get laid with a girl. Right. Then why don't you go get a prostitute? Because prostitutes cost, you know, two, no, three hundred no, no. dollars. You can get yourself a cheap one. You can get a cheap one in the comp. No, dear. The, the, the reality is that good-looking women are giving sex away almost for free. Why would I want to pay if I can get it for $40 or less? You're still spending money on the date. Yeah, but I'm getting I, it for I, a I, lot I, less. I, I, I'm getting it for a lot less than if I paid a prostitute. Now, at least she's not going to come with her suit and her hanger and her toothbrush. She's just going to come, bang, let's go home. Well, That's again, I, you certainly have the option, but it would cost five, six, seven times more than it would cost to buy somebody like you a couple of drinks or maybe a hot dog on a stick. Oh, no, 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 no. I've been with my boyfriend for over two years. We dated for probably four, four or five months before he actually got to hit. Ooh, that's great. Well, you must have a very valuable vagina. Do you sell it by the pound? <laughs> it's costly. It's very costly. I have a very strong attitude, and he loves that about me. That yeah, I'm not well, well he's a pussy. He's a complete pussy, and, and, and you're just an expensive prostitute. I really doubt that. I really, really doubt well, that. Well, you're I'm calling in, and you're bragging about how much it would cost to uh, get laid by you. No cost at all. No cost at all. It takes. It took him five months. That's how much it cost him. Yeah, right. How many? How much did he have to spend on dates in those five months? To be honest, our first date, I actually paid. You know and, what? And I I'm talking about. Yeah, well, you're making investment in the future. I'm talking about over the five months. 
How much did he have to pay? Not much. Probably on our mm-hmm. dates, we were to go to a small little restaurant. No big deal. Right. How much? Uh, I kid you not, maybe $25. $25 each yeah. date? Total? Yeah, no more. No more. Where are you eating? Where are you eating? Where are you eating, uh, the Carl's Jr.? Think about it. We go to the movies, it's $21. We grab a Subway, we grab a small snack. That's another, what, 15 bucks? Uh, you're up to 36 bucks right there. There we go, but he didn't get late the first time. Well, I, I told guys it takes three times, and if it takes more than three times, get the hell out. And why is he still here? Why is mine? Because he's here? a pussy, and he is not familiar with the uh, tenets of Like Is 101. He's not a listener. He's a pussy, and he's a cop. And you know cops are pigs. Oh, I don't Honestly, really care. Yeah, you know, the fact that somebody's a cop doesn't mean they can't be a pussy when it comes to their social lives. No, no, no. He By the way, some that. of the bravest men alive, uh, our uh, armed forces, uh, these men are pussies when it comes to relationships. And I'm and trying what? to teach these boys to have the same, uh, the same uh, uh, fearless attitude that they have when they are uh, fighting in other countries, when they are going up against women, because it's war out there. And they're they're afraid of they're shooting off these people, but yet they can't stand up to women. That's what I'm telling you, and that's why I'm telling you, being a cop doesn't mean you can't be a pussy when it comes to relationships. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No. Oh yes. I'm, honestly, my father, he told me I would buy anything for you if you listen to this radio station. My father is very old fashioned. I was shocked. When I heard what you guys talk about in the show, which well, is now very you know, realistic. Now you know what your father believes. No, no, no. It's realistic what you guys say. And it's true, and it's pretty sad when men are on the phone talking about, oh, guess what, Tom? I'm going on a date, and I'm going to go do this girl right now, and she has a child. How disrespectful is that? Well, I, I say you shouldn't waste your time with women with children. They are, uh, uh, they are oh, used goods. On my own. They I are damaged merchandise. What? I'm talking about children when I'm in my 30s, and I'm 22 years old. We're not talking old. about you. No, but I'm just saying. Well, why are you turning this around to be about you? No, 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 no. I'm, it's not a, I don't care when you're having children. No, it doesn't matter, Tom. I'm just giving you a little piece of... I don't everything. need it. I was talking about other people, not you. Okay, but that's disrespectful. How low can you go to call a radio station and tell Tom, Tom, I'm going to go lay this girl? <laughs> What's wrong with that? What, well, what's disrespectful about it? We don't know the girl's name or where she lives. We don't have any idea. But how sad is that? Would that is how guys think. Daughter? That is think how we think. Someone, someone talking about your daughter that way. That your is daughter. how we think. Everybody is somebody's daughter. And everybody is going to bang somebody's daughter tonight. Eventually. That's Eventually, right. Eventually, yes. That's right. So uh, it, what do you mean? It's disrespectful. Please. It's like guys who look at Playboy magazine and all of a sudden they see their daughter in there as a playmate and they get all upset about it. Like, how hypocritical is that? Yes. Everybody I is have... somebody's daughter. Mm-hmm. And uh, I must tell you, I've done rodeo sex with more than one chick who's somebody's daughter. Oh, wow. So sad. I saw these women are an embarrassment to other women who are t- trying to power Now, they're themselves. your competition, when darling. When you're being Miss Pris over there and you're refusing to put out, these are the women who give us sex when you won't put out. By the way, that's who your boyfriend was getting it from when you weren't putting out. Don't kid yourself. No, this this oh, guy. Oh, yeah. No, he would never do that. have on him so many times. He that's would never he do so that. Sad. He would so never sad. do that. He would never do that. You can't have a monogamous relationship with someone who's not having sex with you. He was having sex with other women at the very least until you started putting out. No, 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 no. Oh, he yeah, was in yeah, my yeah, house yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in my house every day. He would go home. Doesn't home. matter. He would call me as soon as he was home. Fuck Great. And what did he do after that? Sleep. He would sleep on the phone with me. He wanted to He would sleep, sleep on the phone with you. He wanted to hear me. Well, he's a complete pussy. He's a good, good man. He's a complete and utter pussy. And then another thing about the texting. What's wrong with texting when you're on a date? If he comes, he's buying you a $4 meal to get I'm buying you a $4 meal. I want you looking in my eyes. I don't want you texting anybody else. Guess what? The woman's getting ready to get late tomorrow with another... That's exactly what I... That's what I'm talking about. So why should we pay to take you out and feed your little chubby face?
when you're actually setting yourself up to get laid tomorrow. You've got to be kidding me. It's the Tom Likas Show.